Looking at the thumbnail, okay, so I'm no Blade Runner. Very few are Harrison Ford or Ryan Gosling. Have you seen those abs? Whatever, let's review it. Blade Runner 2049. So Blade Runner 2049 is the sequel to Ridley Scott's cult classic Blade Runner. This one's directed by Denis Villeneuve. It stars Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling plays a Blade Runner. It's pretty much in this world, there are human beings and there are replicants. Replicants are ultimately artificially created human beings, but they're much stronger, so they're made for slave labor. In the original Blade Runner movie, all replicants were deemed illegal on Earth. In Blade Runner 2049, the newer models are illegal. The older models, they are illegal. In both Blade Runner films, the ones from the LAPD who find, bring in, or accept exterminate those replicants, they're known as Blade Runners. This time around, Ryan Gosling is the Blade Runner, and ultimately he finds a little bit of information, he starts pulling on this string, proverbial string, not an actual string. It starts leading him to new information, new places, there is something big at the end of this, and there are those in positions of power who do not want him to find this out, thus we have a Blade Runner movie. A very investigative Blade Runner movie. And Ryan Gosling is great. If I, I don't know if I can actually watch a movie and be like, Ryan Gosling wasn't that good. I haven't seen that lately, I can't say I've seen it really ever. Robin Wright was great, Jared Leto. I feel like Jared Leto just has to be a weirdo in every movie. In this one, he is an eccentric weirdo, but he's also the head of a corporation who makes artificial human beings. The fact that the Blade Runner movies in general deal with the facts and the concept of what is humanity, what is a soul, do they dream of electric sheep? Anyone who makes these replicants is gonna have a god complex. He kind of comes across as a douchey asshole like that, so he was good in it. And I said before, this movie is very investigative, a thing I liked. It would be so easy for someone to be like, okay, Blade Runner sequel. No, two words, action franchise. Not here. You get the feeling Denny Villeneuve was like, I am a Blade Runner fan. I want to make a Blade Runner movie how a Blade Runner sequel should be. It felt like a proper Blade Runner sequel. It's a very investigative movie. One thing leads to the next thing, which leads to the next thing. All the while asking the questions, just seeing how human beings address replicants in this world, you're like, it feels like you're all dicks to them. But to them, they're hardware. But in the history of any civilization that had slave labor, that's how they saw them. Tools, not people. And Harrison Ford being in this movie, I was actually actually really concerned because by the end of Blade Runner, depending on which version you watch, but I feel like at the end of every version of Blade Runner, there's strong implication, but you never get this hard answer about who he is, what he is. And I was scared going into this movie because I was like, I don't want a hard answer. Again, you get strong implications, but you don't get hard answers. You get an answer about as strong as an origami unicorn on the ground at the end of the first movie. So I love how he handled that. I feel like that's why he took on this whole project. So he was like, if I don't, someone's gonna screw that up. And I like the tech in the world. The scenery and the tech just really fleshes out the world. I loved looking at this world. It's really cool to look back at the original Blade Runner and you're like, ah, so that's analog technology in the future as they thought it would go. And in this movie, they're like, this is analog technology in the future of that future where they think it will go. There's some digital tech in here, but there's a lot of analog tech too. They kept the Blade Runner world intact because they actually advanced the tech they had 30 years prior through the lenses of Ridley Scott who made it in 1982. However, as much as I enjoyed this movie, the pacing in it, it's kind of ass sometimes, which it is a Blade Blade Runner sequel for Blade Runner fans, so the pacing for the first movie's ass sometimes too. Only difference is the first one you can reflect on and be like, oh, that heavily influenced sci-fi. I don't know how, if at all, this movie's going to influence sci-fi. I mean, it could. Given the information I have right now, you just don't know. Which is why I don't fault anybody who walked out of Blade Runner in 1982 and was like, eh, I really didn't like it. It didn't become influential until it became influential. Then looking back, like, oh, masterpiece. This movie's three hours long. I just didn't think it needed to be three hours long. You didn't need to take three hours to get us there. There's even a couple scenes in here I was like, I feel like you're setting up for something, it doesn't really go anywhere. There's a conversation in particular, I thought that was gonna be a big deal later on, it doesn't really become a big deal. Which kind of bummed me out, that was an opportunity for some conflict. Who knows, maybe it was in the original cut that was four hours long. If it follows the Blade Runner 1 path in the course of the next two decades, we're gonna get four cuts of this thing. And I suppose that is a positive and a negative, as much as I love the questions of what is humanity, what is a soul. Neat to see, but it was also asked in the original Blade Runner movie. So the deeper things in this movie are like, I have seen that before. In fact, there are some things in this movie now you have seen in other sci-fi films. Guys, in the end, Blade Runner 2049, I enjoyed it. It was a proper Blade Runner sequel. If you like the original Blade Runner, I think you'll like this movie. If you love the original Blade Runner, I think you'll love this movie. In that, if you're not a fan of Blade Runner, I don't think you're gonna be a fan of Blade Runner 2049. This movie did everything it needed to do to make a Blade Runner sequel, which is expand on the universe. Tell a story that felt like it had to be told. Tell a story that was going to be there because Blade Runner 1 happened. Don't tell a story that is there now because you rearranged and wrote shit and you had to make a 
sequel happen because Blade Runner is a cult classic now, which is ultimately what sequels are, which is ultimately I'm sure what this is. It doesn't feel that way and I like that. I will say Blade Runner 2049 is worth watching and worth buying on Blu-ray. I'm more curious though, if you're not a fan of the original movie, can you be a fan of this movie? Only time will tell, only you guys can tell me. All right guys, so Blade Runner 2049, have you seen it? What did you think about it? And what did you think of the original Blade Runner also? Whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.